Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Market Chief Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me for the second, we have Simon Mott, Chief Marketing Officer with Track Insight. Simon, it's great to see you as always. Welcome back to Trade Talks. Thanks, Jill. Great to be back. Good to see you again. Thank you, Simon. And two weeks ago, the report from the UN International Panel on Climate Change said that we are now at code red for humanity. What's been the impact on the energy sector? Yeah, absolutely. This has got a lot of headlines, Jill. Um, and despite the authority of the United Nations, I fear that probably this hasn't had as much impact on the energy sector as macroeconomic forces. Um, what we see in the ETF world is uh, ETFs which track the energy sector being among the worst performers of the uh, last week. Now, I don't think, and uh, we at Track Insight don't think this is a reaction to the UN statement, but probably a larger uh, force in terms of declining oil prices and downward pressure on the energy sector in general. However, what is very interesting in terms of sustainable investment flows is that while the European ETF market has seen more than 50% of the flows year to date go into sustainable strategies, the North American market has seen less than 6%. So while there is potentially a climate crisis happening, Investors this side of the Atlantic, uh, speaking from London, seem to be reacting, but investors in the US uh, don't seem to be allocating to ESG strategies at all. And in fact, the energy sector has been, as I said, one of the worst performing of the week. Some of the funds that we've seen include NNRG, which is the nine point energy fund, down over 10%, and PSCE, which is the Invesco Small Cap Energy ETF, also down over 10%. So we've spoken about the energy sector before. It's been up and down all over this year. And I think that uh, given the kind of pressures and given the kind of news that we're seeing this week, it's likely to continue to be a volatile sector. Simon, how are fears of the Delta variant impacting the ETF markets? Yeah, well, look, clearly this is a huge story and we're seeing this uh, 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 every, you know, countries across the world. Um, New Zealand, for example, just went into a lockdown based on a single COVID case. Now, what we're seeing is that the general uh, fear around, uh, around the Delta variant of COVID is really hitting a number of different sectors. As I just said, the oil price is falling. There's less demand for fuel because people are driving less, people are flying less. Uh, it's harming mobility. But we've also seen um, other uh, factors in play, uh, including China. Um, shutting ports um, based on COVID uh, uh, outbreaks. And this has hit a number of sectors. So in terms of energy ETFs, we've seen three and a half million dollars come out of that sector just in the last week. And also sentiment around consumer spending is turning negative. Consumer staples focused ETFs have lost $133 million over the last seven days. And the discretionary sector has lost even more, $206 million of outflows just in the last week. So COVID was really affecting a lot of different sectors in a lot of different ways. Some of that comes down to supply chain. Some of that comes down to perceptions around demand. Um, but clearly this is, a, this is a mega theme, which is attacking every single sector and is really connecting markets in a way that we haven't seen uh, uh, previously with, with, with other macro trends. Given the disruption in shipping markets, what options do U.S. investors have to invest in this sector? Yeah, so it's very interesting, Jill, because when we look at the top performing ETFs of the last week, we see a couple of different things. So first of all, we see that the VIX uh, ETF track in short-term VIX futures have really been some of the best performing ETFs of the week. So that's a good thing for people who are invested in them, but it's a bad thing if you want to look at it from a, from a different angle. It's a fear gauge. So investors are very concerned about what's happening to the US economy, particularly over the next, uh, the next weeks and months. But one of the top performers uh, of the last week has been B-Dry. It's one of the things we've spoken about on Trade Talk a couple of times before. Uh, this is one of the shipping indexes. It tracks an index of, uh, of freight futures. 
But it's not the only game in town. There's been a new launch in the last couple of weeks. This used to be the only way investors could allocate to the shipping sector. But Sonic Shares has stepped up to launch an ETF with a ticker boat. Great ticker. Well done to their marketing team. This is the Sonic Shares Global Shipping ETF. But investors need to really understand the differences between these two products. Because while B-Dry tracks an index of freight futures, Sonic Shares tracks an index of companies, uh, it's an equity index of companies involved in the shipping index, or sorry, the shipping industry. Um, they're both very, very different, uh, even though they attack the same market. Now, uh, it's, it's fascinating, given what we've just said about the changes in demand uh, from consumers and in the consumer sector, uh, we do see China shutting its third largest ports, which is creating um, a bottleneck. And also, having spoken to shipping analysts, I don't see uh, container availability opening up over the next 18 to 24 months. So the shipping sector is something to watch. Investors now have double the options than they did two weeks ago to invest in this sector. But they are two different avenues, and I'm going to be fascinated to see how they perform. B-Dry is still one of the top performers of the year, up over 270%. So the shipping sector is something investors should certainly keep a close eye on. All right, Simon, appreciate the insight as always. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. and Jill Malandrino, Global Market Reporter at NASDAQ.